thank you for stopping by. My name is Urvi and today's video is going to be the last and final video in my NYC apartment hunting video series. If you haven't watched my previous videos in this series, I am going to be linking them somewhere up here. I highly recommend you watch them. These have been some of my very favorite videos to make and they've also done really really well on my channel however if you don't know i actually already moved into a new new york city apartment and i'm also not in new york right now i am in bangalore india which is my hometown and i'm gonna be here for a little bit and so this one is going to be the last new york city apartment hunting video maybe for a little bit i don't know if i'm gonna be doing these again anytime soon all that said today's video is going to be what $2,500 to $3,000 gets you in Hell's Kitchen, Manhattan. Hell's Kitchen, also known as Clinton, is a neighborhood on the west side of Manhattan. It is considered somewhere between the 40th to the 59th Street and somewhere between the 8th Avenue and the Hudson River on the west side. This neighborhood is officially referred to as Clinton, but people still call it Hell's Kitchen. Now where this name came from, there's several theories behind it. In the 1800s, this neighborhood used to be a rough area of town. There's a past of like violence and stuff in this area. And so until a couple years ago, Hell's Kitchen rents were actually lower compared to other parts of Manhattan. However, in the recent years, there have been a lot of new developments popping up in this area, including luxury high-rise apartments. What I love about this area though is that it's a good mix of like pre-war walk-up buildings and a few new developments including high-rise apartments and such. Today Hell's Kitchen has a large LGBTQ population and is also home to a lot of LGBTQ bars and restaurants. I absolutely love Hell's Kitchen. I've been living in Hell's Kitchen for the last two years. It honestly has so many restaurants and it's such a dynamic neighborhood. It's actually super close to Times Square and those parts, which I don't really like as a local living in New York City, but it also means a lot of options. It's also very, very close to Central Park and it is lined by Hudson River on the west side. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some high-rise luxury apartments in Hell's Kitchen. Now, with all of the deals in New York City due to the pandemic, Hell's Kitchen has some of the best deals on these luxury apartments compared to anywhere else in Manhattan. And so I thought it would be great to show you guys what your money can get you in this neighborhood. The first high-rise building that I saw in Hell's Kitchen had a couple of different units that I saw, but I'm gonna show you two different units that I really liked. So both the apartments that I saw in this building were one bed, one bath apartments. All of these were ranging between 32 to 3300 gross rent, and with two months free on a 12 month lease, they were coming up to anywhere between 26 to 2800 net rent. So the first unit that I saw, you actually walked into this kitchen it was an open concept kitchen but it didn't have an island it looked into the living area and there was also a very big coat closet in the entryway the living room itself was a pretty good size but when you looked at the window there was a building covering your view which meant there wasn't really great light here this was also not a very high floor however i did see it in the evening so maybe during the mornings it would have been a little bit better than what it was from the living room, you walked into the bedroom. Again, a pretty good size, uh, same view, same kind of lighting. It also had one half closet in the bedroom. And as you walked out, out of the bedroom towards the bathroom, there was another closet with inbuilt shelving, which I thought is really great for storing shoes and bags and stuff. The bathroom itself was pretty standard, nothing too special. I did like the gray tiling though, which I just thought it made it look a little bit nicer. So yeah, the first apartment, nothing too special. However, being that it was in a luxury building coming in at $2,600, I think this was pretty good. The next apartment that I saw in the same building, this was a little bit higher in price, but you will see why. In this apartment, you actually walked in to an open kitchen and a beautiful island with a beautiful marble on it. The agent showing me the apartment told me that this apartment had been renovated and so all the kitchen finishes and everything was new. And the kitchen of course was overlooking the living area. Now this apartment was on a higher floor so the views actually were pretty good and the light as well was pretty great. Now from the living area you walked towards the bathroom and there was a closet there with a washer and dryer in unit. Now if you know anything about New York City real estate you know how rare it is to have a washer and dryer in unit. And the bathroom itself I thought was also pretty beautiful. It had like a different kind of tiling in the bath. 
There was another small closet outside the bedroom. And lastly, the bedroom also was a pretty good size with the same views that you saw from the living area. The bedroom also had a half closet. So yeah, overall, this apartment coming in at $2,800 Given that you have the convenience of a washer and dryer in unit and all the new finishes, all the new appliances, again, a pretty good deal for a luxury building. Now let's talk about the building itself. Of course, all luxury buildings have these kinds of amenities, but this building had like a work area with a conference room. It had like a common outdoor space for the residents. Of course, it had a gym as well. But my favorite part was this beautiful lounge area, which was kind of like doubling up as a library or a reading area. I think it was so beautifully made. The amenities for this building were optional and were coming in at an additional $75 a month. However, because of COVID, they had it waived for a couple months and didn't know when they were going to reinforce it. Moving on to the next one, the apartment that I saw in this building was a one bed, one bath. It was priced at $3,800 gross rent, which I thought was pretty high, but with three months free on a 15 month lease, it was coming up to about $3,040. All of these buildings have a lot of apartments empty right now, and so they do want to fill them, and so they're open to negotiation. They usually have a $1,500 wiggle room, whatever it is. So make sure if you're going in for any of these apartments that you negotiate, this can bring your rent down to maybe $100, $200, which over 12 months or, or longer, it really adds up. Okay, now moving on to the tour itself. This apartment had a pretty unique layout. As you walked in, there was like open shelving, which I thought was pretty great. It also had two coat closets in the entryway, a big open kitchen with a very big kitchen island. But here's the highlight of this unit. It had a pretty large private balcony, which felt more like a terrace. It was so huge. And then the living room itself was also pretty spacious. The views were great. The lighting was decent. Walking into the bedroom, it was a decent size. There was a really large closet in the bedroom with tons of storage space. My favorite part of this apartment was the bathroom. I thought the tiling throughout the bath was so beautiful. I don't know what you call these, but like they just seemed very contemporary and designer to me. In my opinion, for all of the deals that are out there, being that this was a one bed, one bath apartment, the price I thought was pretty high at $3,000. I think the fact that you had a private terrace, if that means anything to you, maybe this would be worth it. Coming to the building itself, the amenities here were also pretty compared to the first one there was a gym there was a working area for the residents like a lounge area where you could maybe book a conference room if you wanted to there was also like reading nooks everywhere however my favorite part about this one was that there was a pool and it was a pretty beautiful indoor pool with temperature regulated water it was really great again for this apartment they had like a 650 dollars per year amenity fee but because of covid and because of like an introductory offer they were offering it at about 300 dollars a year so yeah overall amenities in this building were my favorite and it really felt very homey and inviting moving on to the next building that i saw again this was also an amenity building this was a one bed one bath but i did see a model unit which had already been flexed into a two bedroom apartment so it did have a very big living area as you will see technically a one bed but could be flexed into a two bed apartment the rent was thirty six hundred dollars gross and they had an off of about three months free on an 18 month lease and so the net rent was coming up to three thousand dollars on this one since this was a model unit you should get a pretty good idea of what the living space would look like it was very very beautifully decorated so let me show you walked into a very large living area which was already flexed like i said there was a really nice separation added between the living space and a bedroom space now if you didn't want to make that a bedroom space you could also make that your work area this was a south facing apartment and so there was ample direct sunlight which is so awesome always and the layout in this apartment i thought was pretty smart like the kitchen was not taking away from the living area space and i love that this particular corner they'd made it like a dining nook it was still an open concept kitchen you had an island you could look into the living area and then walking from the kitchen towards the bedroom there was actually a again a closet with inbuilt shelving the bedroom in this apartment though oh my god it was so so beautifully decorated it gave you like a perfect idea of everything that you could do with every single corner it was a very good size had a large closet had great lighting had amazing Hudson River views 
And then from there, walking into the bathroom. The bathroom I thought was nothing special, but like it did the job. This apartment though, it was by far my favorite apartment out of all of the apartments that I saw in Hell's Kitchen. Maybe it was the decor, maybe it was like the open spaces, and maybe it was the direct sunlight, the views. I thought everything was so on point in this apartment. However, I was really not a fan of this building. It just gave me very sad vibes. And I see this in every apartment video, but there is always one or two spaces that I just, when I walk into them, I just do not get good vibes. I just feel very um, sad, very claustrophobic almost. And so I always take that into consideration because that's how you're gonna be feeling living there. Not to say the apartment itself gave me those vibes. The apartment was completely opposite. I got such good vibes from it. For the building, as you will see, all the amenities were slightly older, not really well maintained. They have like a laundry, a private indoor space for residents. It also had a gym. Everything that you'd expect from an amenity building, there was also no extra amenity fees here. So overall, this apartment was my favorite. The building, not so much. The last building that I saw in Hell's Kitchen, I actually saw two units here. They were priced between $34 and $3,500 gross rent, and the net rent was coming up to somewhere between $27 and $2,800 for both. Both of these were one bed, one bath apartments. And the highlight here was that they were actually offering free moving services for anyone that was moving into this building. And honestly, movers in New York City are so expensive. It can cost anywhere between like $700 to $2,000 or even more depending on the stuff you have. So getting free moving service, no questions asked, was like such a big highlight. Okay, so touring the first apartment, you walked into the apartment and there was a bathroom on the right side. Now something that immediately caught my eye was how contemporary and modern this bathroom looked. There was also a pretty large coat closet near the entrance, which is always awesome to store all of your winter stuff in New York City. Then you walked in to the living area. Now the kitchen actually was part of the living area, which I was not a fan of this layout because I feel like the kitchen should be separate, otherwise it starts feeling like a studio. The appliances and everything were actually pretty good. They were all pretty new and the living room had floor to ceiling windows now this unit was south facing so you can see all the direct sunlight streaming in the bedroom was just attached to the living room again the same floor to ceiling windows beautiful natural sunlight a great size closet and also river views again overall i thought that this unit was pretty beautiful i just was not a big fan of the layout especially like the kitchen Moving on to the next unit that I saw. Now this unit was actually getting refreshed or renovated and that's why the floors were covered and there was a bunch of like um, work going on. Just imagine this apartment as if there was none of that stuff there. I will say that this layout was actually my favorite layout out of all the apartments that I saw in Hell's Kitchen. I really thought this apartment was so beautiful and so large. You walked into a pretty large living room, the same floor to ceiling windows. This was on the 12th floor, so the, so the views were also pretty decent. Although this was not south facing, however, because there were such huge windows, the light was not a problem at all. The kitchen again was part of the living area. It had clear storage cabinets. It looked pretty, but I just thought the layout was again not my style, just the kitchen area. Then you walked in to a small passageway. Now in this passageway, there were two closets. The small closet actually was going to have a washer and dryer installed in it. And then there was another large closet where you could store your clothes, your coats, etc. And here's the highlight of this apartment. You walked into the bathroom. Again, all of those modern, stylish like fittings, but the bathroom actually had a window with a pretty beautiful view. It felt like it was straight out of a movie set, like the window had a shade you could pull. I have never seen anything like this, so I thought this was pretty special. And then lastly, you walk into the bedroom. You can see the light there was pretty good. Um, the size I thought was also awesome. Like you could use one corner of this bedroom to put a desk in. It would still fit like a queen or a king size bed. And there was another closet in the bedroom. So 
overall this was actually the biggest apartment this was like 800 square feet and the bathroom with the window that was priceless i thought there was also wash and dryer so overall very very beautiful apartment again the rent was about 2800 dollars net let's talk about the building itself so this one also had all of those amenities it had a laundry room it had like a lounge area workspace a gym and this one also had a pool overall i thought the apartments were really beautiful in this building however this did seem a little bit like a hotel it didn't feel like a house it just gave me like the feeling where you check into like a luxury hotel it just felt like that not on top of my list but a pretty good steal regardless and with that we have reached the end of this video and the end of the new york city apartment hunting series i really hope you guys enjoyed it i may or may not continue this in the future when i'm back in new york city based on if you guys are still interested so let me know in the comments below also this is my instagram handle feel free to follow me on there i post a lot of like real-time content on there so if you want to keep up with my life follow me on there with that said don't forget to also like this video and subscribe to my channel thank you for all all the love you guys have been showing my videos and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!